Hi, this tooltip is related to the safe use of a pillar drill and supplements the model risk assessment 039. A pillar drill, also known as a drill press, is commonly used for drilling precise holes in various materials. It's important to follow the correct procedures when using a pillar drill, but there are also some things to consider before you use it. This tooltip will go through the setting up and using of the pillar drill, and will explain the control measures that are identified in the model risk assessment. As with all fixed machines, the pillar drill needs to be securely bolted down and installed correctly, with cables run through a protective conduit and the power supplied via a lockable isolator. Pillar drills have a belt drive system that can enable the operator to adjust the speed to match the operation. However, the belt covers must be securely closed and should be interlocked or only be opened with a tool. Before starting to use the machine, operators must wear appropriate safety gear, including eye protection. The latest version of the British standard states that eye protection that can withstand high impact should be worn. These are marked with EN1661B. For some operations, the operator may need other PPE, but this will depend upon the activity and the associated risk assessment. It is important to ensure that the work area is well lit and clean, with plenty of space around the machine for safe manoeuvring of materials. The image here identifies the parts of the machine that the operator must be aware of, including the installation and machine parts. Fitting the drill into the chuck is an operation usually carried out by the teacher or technician. But with practice, pupils could do this. But the fitting should be checked by the teacher or technician before it is used. Fitting a drill bit will require that the chuck guard is moved out of position. It is important that this is replaced before the machine is used. Drill bits come in a variety of sizes and shapes, but must always have a shank, usually round or hexagonal, that fits securely into the chuck. There are two types of chuck. Those with keys are the most common, but keyless chucks are becoming more common in schools. The chuck key, a T-shaped tool used to tighten and loosen the chuck, should be stored near the machine, but it should never be left in the chuck as it can be thrown out if the machine is turned on. You must insert the chuck key into one of the holes on the chuck and with a firm grip on the chuck key, turn it clockwise to tighten it and counterclockwise to loosen the chuck. A keyless chuck requires the operator to hold the two knurled collars and turn them to open the jaws or to close the jaws. This should not be attempted when the machine is running. When the drill bit is in the chuck, it should be checked to make sure that it is central, as it is possible to tighten the chuck with the drill bit only caught by two of the jaws. By slowly rotating the chuck by hand, you can see if the drill bit is running correctly. If it isn't, you can loosen the chuck grip and insert the drill bit again. Then re-tighten the chuck and check it again. This can be more of a problem with smaller drill bits. Finally the chuck guard should be replaced. There are two drilling operations, drilling right through a workpiece and drilling part way through. Depending on your material and the drill bit size, the drill speed may need adjusting. Lower speeds are suitable for larger bits or harder materials, while higher speeds work well for smaller bits and softer materials. Before drilling a hole, the workpiece should be marked to locate where the hole is required for the material. 
For timber, this would normally be a pencil mark. Plastics can be marked with a felt tip and metals with a centre punch. A centre punch mark also helps locate the drill bit as you start to drill. When getting the machine ready to drill the hole, it is important that the workpiece is secured in place using a vise or clamps. Make sure it is firmly held in place so that it cannot spin or move while drilling. Most pillar drills have adjustable tables, so the height can be adjusted to allow for different sizes of workpiece. Adjusting the table height should be done by the teacher or technician. Before starting the machine, the operator should check that the workpiece is in the desired height and in line with the drill bit. If you only intend to drill partway through, the depth adjustment should be set to limit how far the drill can be lowered into the workpiece. If the machine does not have a depth adjustment, a piece of tape can be attached to the drill bit. The operator should check that everything is secure, the drill is correctly held in the chuck, and the workpiece is secure. The drill depth should be set if it is needed, and the machine should be set to the correct speed. Finally, the chuck guard should be adjusted so that it covers the moving parts, but does not foul the workpiece. When all the checks have been made and the machine is set up correctly, the operator is ready to drill the hole. When turning on the pillar drill, the operator should wait a couple of seconds for the drill to reach its desired speed. Ensuring that loose clothing and hair are secured and hands are clear of the drilling area, the operator can lower the drill bit carefully into the workpiece, applying steady, even pressure and allow the machine to do the work. Do not force the bit as this can lead to the drill breaking or damaging the materials or binding in the workpiece. After finishing the drilling operation, the operator should withdraw the drill from the workpiece before switching off the machine. The operator should wait for the machine to come to a complete stop and then carefully remove the workpiece, bearing in mind that there may be waste materials such as dust or swarf on and around the work area, and the material and the drill bit may be hot. If further holes are needed to be drilled with the same drill bit, the machine should be left in a clean state ready for the next user. Otherwise, it'd be good practice to remove the drill bit and return the bit and the chuck key to the respective storage. Teachers and technicians should be aware that a particular machine or piece of equipment can present different hazards related to particular operation that is being carried out. And there will also be differences in the risk presented by different users. For example, a year seven pupil drilling a three millimeter hole in an acrylic sheet will have different issues around competence and maturity to an 11 year old pupil carrying out the same operation. There will also be different hazards presented when drilling different materials, such as controlling the dust when drilling MDF or handling the swarf from drilling steel. In our video describing how to carry out and record risk assessments, we explained the use of a spreadsheet to record the important control measures from the MRAT and how to use that information to inform the user and to help when teaching pupils. The text on this slide is taken from our record of the risk assessment for using the pillar drill in our own facility. Thanks for watching.